Hello everyone, and welcome back to another installment in the Sensei series. Today, we're looking at the five things that all guitarists struggle with at one point or another, and how one can go about working on these things. If you've never struggled with any of these things, well, give yourself a pat on the back. But before we get into it, I'll quickly let you know that I've got some new merch available. You can now get the Samurai and Guitar Playing Card in a variety of sizes and styles over www.shopsamuraiguitarist.com. Picking up this design or any of the other designs that I've released is a great way to support what I do while also looking quite cool. Anyways, let's get to it. So here's how I gauged what things most guitar players struggle with. I sent out a question on Instagram asking what you guys have been battling with, and these are the topics that I saw come up time and time again. By far, the biggest issue that you guys seem to be struggling with is motivation. This can be subjective, but I'll let you know what has worked for me when I've had trouble with this. First of all, you want to make sure that you're working on things that you're excited to work on. This sounds obvious, but so many times have I heard about musicians who are practicing something because they feel like they should be, not because they enjoy it. If your guitar teacher is trying to get you to work on, I don't know, flamenco guitar, but your passion lies in funk, then you're not gonna feel overly motivated to practice and you should probably reconsider who's teaching you guitar. Everything you work on should be feeding into what you care about. Listen to your heart. What music gets you excited? When you're practicing, there should be a direct connection between your hard work and your passion. Now, don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean that you should only be doing the fun stuff like jamming and noodling. But if you can see how something less interesting, like let's say running arpeggios, ties directly into your soloing, that should motivate you to practice them. And when you're doing the hard work, you're gonna to wanna to think about how you can apply what you're practicing in a practical setting. So again, say you're running those arpeggios. At first, you're gonna to wanna to spend some time going up and down them and getting them under your fingers. But after you've done this, it's great to record a backing track with a beat and play those arpeggios along to the track. You're still practicing, but this is a much more musical setting. From there, you could try just jamming over top of that backing track, but every now and then in your solo, you pull out an arpeggio. The big idea here is you're not just doing the hard, boring, menial stuff, but you're also practicing with an element of fun to it. Another important way to stay motivated is have some sort of means of documenting your progress. If you can see the fruits of your labor, it encourages you to stick with it. Recording yourself regularly and using that as a reference point, keeping track of the fastest BPM, you can play a challenging piece set and slowly seeing that number go up, this kind of thing. I would also highly recommend that you have some sort of outlet for your hard work. If you're practicing and practicing, but have nowhere you can be creative with your new skills, it all seems rather pointless. This can be a band that you play with, spending time writing music, recording music, whatever. These projects not only aid in your development, but if they're fun, they encourage you to keep at it. The last note that I'll make on motivation is that, for me at least, I am most inclined to make music and practice when I'm in a good place. Your happiness shouldn't be tied into one single thing like music. That's too much pressure to put on it. And if it's not going well, that can be quite discouraging. Maintaining balance in all aspects of your life, health, mental, social, family, work, will only benefit your music and your motivation. And keep in mind, right now, we are all living through a very strange and trying time. If you don't feel overly motivated, that's probably par for the course. I don't know that a lot of people are living their best lives in 2020. Okay, next up, a lot of people struggle with technique and speed. Now, I'm definitely not an overly technical guitarist, but I have spent a fair bit of time practicing this stuff, and my theory for it comes from a friend of mine. I went to school for music with a fellow who holds the title of world's fastest drummer. One time I asked him how he got his chops to this level as it seemed totally superhuman to me. To my surprise, he told me that the vast majority of his practice was spent repeating very simple things incredibly slow. The idea is you make sure that every single one of your motions, be it with a drumstick or guitar pick, is as efficient as it possibly can be. And every time you play something, you use that same perfect effortless motion. When you're playing painfully slow, you can analyze your technique in a way that you can't when you're playing fast. And you wanna make sure that these good habits become the natural motion through repetition. You do wanna spend some portion of your practice pushing the speed at which you can play, but when you do so, you wanna make sure that your technique remains absolutely flawless. I incorporated this type of practice with a variety of picking exercises that essentially covered all the motions that my hand would make. 85% of the time I was going super slow and 15% of the time I was going as fast as I could. Committing to this requires quite a lot of discipline and time. I certainly haven't put the kind of effort into this that many of my peers have, but whatever speed I do have comes from this. The next thing that many struggle with is developing a strong sense of rhythm. The answer to this is playing with the metronome as much as you possibly can. When you're in the practice room, there are very few situations that you can't incorporate a metronome. Use it whenever you can. But on top of that, you can spend time doing rhythm-specific exercises. I'll show you one way that you might incorporate a click. 
Set your metronome to something fairly quick, let's say 200. From there, play something extraordinarily easy, like a C power chord, and play it using whole notes over top of that. That shouldn't be too hard, but if it is, do that every single day until it becomes easy. From there, let's try doing quarter notes over top of that click. Once we've got this down, we'll make it so that we're playing those quarter notes at the same speed, but the metronome beats half as many times, which would be 100 beats per minute. This is a step harder because now you need to use your internal time to fill in the space between those clicks. Check it out. You can also flip it around so that the metronome pulses on the second and fourth beat instead of the first and the third. Here's how that sounds. We can make this even harder. Let's now go down to 50 BPM with the same chord and rhythm. This is significantly harder because now there's quite a bit more space that you need to fill in with your internal time. You can also move this beat around so that you feel it differently like we did before. You can put it on the two, the three, the and of one, whatever. And you can also go even lower on the metronome. This happens to be as low as mine will go, but I remember when I was really working on this stuff, I set it up so that it would beat every four bars, which was incredibly difficult and really makes you focus on your rhythm. Now, I'm just showing you one way that I've worked on this stuff. My hope would be that you can take this exercise and derive many of your own exercises from it. Moving on to the next topic that many guitarists struggle with, sight reading. When I was in school, I put in a concerted effort to get better at this because it was something that I hadn't worked on all that much before. I will say I don't know that this time was all that well spent as in the worlds that I've worked in, I've never needed to be good at reading anything besides a chord chart. Either way though, I'll tell you how I worked on this. And if it hasn't become clear yet, there's a system that I use to actively improve in every sense. First, you work on something at a difficulty that's easy enough to conceptualize and work out the kinks until you can do it perfectly. You increase the difficulty ever so slightly and do it over and over again at that new threshold until you can do it perfectly there. Repeat this process indefinitely. This holds true for sight reading. Start at as easy a level as you need to. If you really need to go to the basics, you can't get much easier than Hal Leonard book one. From there, gradually work through things that are slightly more difficult, but not so difficult that they're so hard that you can't play through them. I'll put up some links in the description to some sight reading books that I've used. I'll mention a couple more things that I found beneficial when I was working on sight reading. First of all, saying the note names out loud as you play them was something that really helped me. And when you're working on sight reading, don't just do it in one position, do it in all positions across the guitar neck, first and C major, and then gradually add one flat and a sharp, so you'd be in the key of F or G, and then slowly add more and more sharps and flats using those more difficult keys. Again, it's all about that slow, gradual increase in difficulty. And the last topic for today that many guitarists struggle with is learning music by ear. This is an essential skill that many of us neglect because we live in a time where we can quickly figure out basically any song by looking at the tabs for it or watching a YouTube video. Whereas back in the day, you needed to listen to a record over and over again, figuring it out yourself. When I decided that I needed to work on this skill, I used that old approach. I put on a song, grabbed my guitar, and just tried to play it. No matter what, I couldn't get it right. This was extremely frustrating because the rest of my musical skills were far beyond my ear. It felt like my musical ear needed glasses. So I started working on ear training exercises and the more that I did this, the more that sounds came into focus. Learning how to identify and sing intervals was a big part of this. And even though I wasn't breaking down a song interval by interval, the fact that I trained this muscle made everything so much easier. Other things you can do is have software play a chord type for you, major, minor, diminished, whatever, and you have to pick out which one it is. You can do the same thing with melodies, chord progressions, and the like. Every day, I religiously used a program called Aurelia. It's fairly expensive, but if you do some Googling, you should be able to find some free resources. The other thing that I like to remind people is that theory and ear training go hand in hand. Theory allows you to narrow down your options greatly when trying to figure out something by ear. If I know that the song I'm learning is in G major, I know the seven chords that are available in that key, so all I have to do is some simple trial and error to figure out which of those chords sounds right. Understanding this information and also spending the time figuring out how it sounds makes learning a song significantly easier. Without theory, your guessing game is so much harder. When it comes to theory for guitarists, I truly believe that you'll find no better resource than my two courses, which are available over www.samuraiguitartheory.com. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the five big things that guitarists seem to struggle with the most and how you can work on them. Remember to check out shopsamuraiguitarist.com. I have a number of designs over there and by picking up some of that sweet, sweet Sammy G merch, you make content like this possible. Thank you all for watching. If you wanna get caught up in the Sensei series, 
hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for a wide range of musical content. Until next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist. Thank you again, and I'll see you soon.